Welcome back to the channel, Racer X here. And today I wanna to talk a little bit about vehicle theft. And yes, I have done videos about vehicle theft in the past. However, today I was made aware of yet another way that thieves are stealing cars, not just high-end cars, really all cars, but it's just unbelievable how bad this problem really is getting. Thieves are getting very innovative with taking cars. So today I will give you yet another way that thieves are breaking into your car, just something to be aware of. If you guys are brand new to my channel, don't forget to hit subscribe over here in the corner and off we go. Today's video is being sponsored by my friends at CarLock. And the truth is, vehicle theft is completely out of control right now. In the US alone, a vehicle is stolen every 31 seconds. And if you drive a high-end Mopar, like a Hellcat or a Scat Pack, your vehicle is 12 times more likely to be stolen than a normal car. Well, CarLock offers a little peace of mind and it's pretty easy to use. You simply take the device, you plug it into your vehicle's OBD port, download their app, and you are off and running. And they have additional ways to conceal this. They have an extender to kind of hide it up under the dash, or you can get a, a power adapter and connect it directly to your vehicle's battery. And it does a lot more than just keep your vehicle's location. It actually will send alerts to your phone. For example, if the device is tampered with or it senses vibration, it sends an alert to your phone. Also, when your engine is started, it lets you know via a notification. And if the car is moving, it will also send you a notification for that. And for a limited time, if you use my code RACERXCL10, they will give you 10% off of your uh, car lock device and give you a two week free trial subscription. So definitely peace of mind in a chaotic world. Um, you can order this directly off of Amazon or you can check out the link below in the description and on we go with the video. Now, one of the main ways that criminals are able to gain access to cars nowadays is a pretty well-known technique. Um, it is called a relay hack. And basically what that is, is uh, they may have a device like a repeater box, and they have a couple other devices out there as well. But essentially, all they're trying to do is duplicate the signal that comes from your key fob so that it fools your car into thinking that uh, the criminal actually has the key fob at hand, which will allow them to open your door and start your car and drive right off. It's unbelievable how they figured that out, uh, but you'll actually see videos of people with kind of this rope light looking thing, kind of looking around for the signal so that they can be duplicated. And uh, once they have that signal coming from the key fob, um, they can just drive off in your car like it's no big deal. And the car actually thinks that the criminal has the key when they don't. And they can actually store that uh, that signal as well so they can restart the car as needed. It's unbelievable how efficient they are at stealing these cars. And now all of a sudden I have come uh, to, to find out that there's a new way that they're getting uh, into cars because a lot of companies, a lot of people have become wise to the relay hack. They have pouches now to keep the key fobs in. Uh, they actually have smart key fobs now where if they're not moving after like 45 seconds or something like that, they'll actually go to sleep and they won't immediately a signal. So it's like every time, uh, you know, we catch up in terms of technology to prevent thieves from taking cars, they come up with something new. So what do we have? So now they don't even need to replicate your key fob to gain access to your car because what they're doing is they're cracking open that body panel right there in front of your headlight and they're able to gain access to your ECU that controls your headlights. On most modern day cars, they actually have an ECU or a computer that actually controls the headlights because so many cars nowadays, they have headlights or smart headlights that kind of move around uh, based on how much weight is in the car. They can adjust the beam. There's all sorts of things on new cars. Well, thieves have taken full advantage of that. So they crack that panel open and there is a module in there that they actually plug into that allows them to not only gain access to the car, but also start it and drive it off. I'm gonna run inside. We're gonna talk about this a little more. Now, I found this information was in an article written by a gentleman by the name of Dr. Ken Tyndall. He's the CTO of Canis Automotive Labs. Not cannabis for some of you guys out there, not a thing. So anyway, uh, but basically he is a guru. This is a lengthy article, by the way, but he is kind of a guru when it comes to how these automotive systems kind of talk to each other. And he goes on to talk all about how this particular hack works. Um, he also goes on to say that, you know, people do recognize that the relay hack, it's a very popular thing. Um, so while people can do things against the relay hack, 
um, the manufacturers are going to have to do something about this particular thing because this is a whole different situation here. I was unaware, and granted, I'm not a professional automotive thief, so maybe they've known about this for a long time and have been using this, but it's certainly news to me that they can just crack open a panel uh, directly um, near your headlight, access the ECU for your headlights with essentially something that looks like a JBL wireless speaker. And what that does is it sends a signal to the ignition system and also the system for the doors, tells the door to open and tells the ignition system that it's okay to start the car. And it's as simple as that. They just kind of have to know. I mean, they're located in different spots on different cars. The, the one in the uh, article here is for RAV4 Toyota. But apparently most of the modern cars, as I mentioned, they have these ECU controllers for the headlights. They're connected directly into the rest of the, you know, the car systems. And when they can access that with this little bitty device, they can gain access to the car. So they don't even need to know what your key fob signal is anymore. It, it's just incredible how uh, they're able to come up with crap like this. So this is a CAN injector attack or control area network attack. As I mentioned, it uses the vehicle's own kind of internal neural network against it. And I cannot believe how much detail this particular article goes into. I mean, literally every little infinitesimal detail is covered in this article. So you can certainly read up on it. They show diagrams in here about all this. But a couple of things kind of stuck in my mind as I read through all of this, one of which, obviously, as I mentioned, it's a little JBL speaker, um, and they use a lot of the components that are already in this little speaker, and uh, just with a few little modifications, it sounds like $10 worth of components are all that are needed in order to replicate something like this, and it's even one of those situations from the outside, you cannot even tell what it is. It literally looks like a JBL speaker. Um, maybe with like a USB port or whatever, um, but it is a very kind of devious device at its heart. And it, it is just so weird to see something like this and how innovative these thieves have become when it comes to stealing. It almost makes me feel like if they would just work half as hard at a normal job as opposed to taking people's hard-earned assets, uh, that they would make a lot of money. So apparently this can be purchased on the dark web, wherever the heck that is. Doesn't talk about price here, but a ton of detail in this particular article about this particular hack for cars. So the next logical question is, well, now that we know what this uh, can injector attack is, what in the world can we do about it? Because we all kind of feel helpless, right? I mean, we pay a lot of money for our cars, we love them. How in the world can we protect ourselves from something like this? And the answer really isn't that easy. This particular company, this uh, Canis Automotive Labs, they've come up with a solution and apparently they've been reaching out to the various automotive manufacturers, but have had limited uh, luck. They just don't really want to talk security according to this. Um, but this is a huge problem and apparently this is something that the automotive uh, thieves have really figured out. Like I said, no longer do they need that uh, signal coming from your key fob. They will get in this in a different way. Now, one little saving grace is that um, sometimes the wiring is different in each car, right? So on some models like this particular RAV4, they pop that panel right in front of the headlight and literally that module is sitting right there, super easy to access. Now on other models, apparently they bury those wires much deeper down in the car. So they're just much harder to get to for these thieves and sometimes almost impossible to get to in a quick fashion, which I guess is kind of a saving grace but it doesn't add a whole lot of peace of mind when you're thinking about your asset that might be sitting outside that's 40, 50, $100,000, and you feel like you're completely helpless to prevent something like this. Uh, so yeah, they are contacting the automotive manufacturers. Um, I don't think they know just how big of a problem this really is right now. So they do have a fix for it um, that they're trying to work with automotive manufacturers on, but we as individuals can't do a whole lot. We need the, the manufacturers to actually go in and put some fail safes in place. Uh, most of this is like a firmware update in terms of how fast the signals go out. I'm reading into all this stuff. There's a lot here, but um, yeah, the automotive manufacturers need to wake up. Pretty scary stuff. So yes, I suppose there are a few things that you could do as an individual to just make it a little bit harder for these folks. I mean, yeah, you can pull the fuel fuse or you know, you can put some sort of a, just a, a hard device in your car, like a club or a pedal lock or anything like that. Certainly you could use a, a GPS tracker, which they seem to be pretty good at finding, but you just never know. Um, you know, there's lots of things you could try. You could put an air tag in your car. I mean, there's different things, but I have to admit after reading this article and knowing how they're doing this, 
I can't help but feel just a little bit helpless and very worried uh, that this problem not only is continuing to get worse, but I mean, it's going to it's going to start affecting everyone uh, because I, you know I get more and more messages almost daily. Racer X, my car was stolen. I don't know what to do. Um, I mean, all these high profile cars are getting stolen. It's just it's incredible how they're doing this. So anyway, guys, I just wanted to bring your attention to the fact that this can injection uh, technique is out there. It's being actively used. I think it's going to continue to get worse as the automotive manufacturers are getting better at preventing the relay attack. Now they've got something new and it's going to be slow for them to adopt this because obviously we're talking about the internal neural network of the car having to be altered. Uh, anyway, let me know what you guys think uh, about this in the comments down below and I will catch you on the next one. So until then, race race.